All right, let's get started. Um, welcome to CS 3510. This is the last lecture on DP. Uh, the topic of today's lecture is called Knapsack. Um, so let, let's see what we've done so far. This is the fourth lecture on DP. We previously did uh, just one sort of introductory lecture into some easy DP problems. We did a lecture on longest sequences and subsequences and substrings and pound drawing substrings. We did a problem on what's chain matrix multiplication, which was just one really hard DP solution and what that looks like. Today we're going to talk about knapsack, which is closer to chain matrix. It's one really hard uh, DP solution. Um, But it is unlike chain matrix in the sense that there, it, knapsack is, I can't stress how important of a problem knapsack is. While chain matrix feels a little contrived, knapsack is a very universal problem. And we'll see as we're, it's a good segment, a segue into the next unit on NP completeness, uh, because it turns out that a lot of problems are simply like knapsack problems. Uh, knapsack is a really universal problem. There's this huge class of problems which can be phrased in a way that is ide uh, nearly identical to knapsack uh, within polynomial overhead. Um, so first off, what is knapsack? So basically, you have a set of uh, uh, set of items. Uh, each item is indexed by a value vi and a weight wi. Uh, choose a set of items, uh, T, uh, such that uh, the sum of the weights of the items is uh, less than some capacity, W, uh, to maximize um, the sum of the values for the values in T. This is abusive of notation. This is not perhaps the best way to write this. But this is essentially what the knapsack problem is. You have a selection of items, and you also have a knapsack capacity. It's referred to as a capacity. You would refer to this as a capital W. Each item has both a weight and a value. And you want to choose items such that the value of the amount of things that you steal is maximal, but the weight does not exceed what you are allowed to carry. Um, and this is a, there's several variants of knapsack we'll call it, we'll talk about today. This one is called zero one knapsack, uh, simply because you either choose or don't choose every item, right? Um, there is no there's other variants of knapsack. For example, there's infinite copies of an item or, or fractional knapsack or things like this. Um, so this is a, a it seems like a simple state uh, problem on the statement, but as, but as we'll see, it, it has quite a lot of structure. So considered uh, we have uh, weights. Uh, um, one, two, uh, three, and four. Now, the index of the item here is the weight, but that's not always true. And then we have values, um, 12, uh, 17, uh, 18, and 25, right? So, and your capacity, capital W, is equal to six, right? So you can carry away six pounds or six units of weight, of, uh, uh, weight and you want to maximize the amount you can steal. So um, what are some things you can steal? You could steal, um, you could steal item, uh, item four uh, plus item two, which would be equal to six. But that would uh, give you value uh, 25 plus 17. What is 25 plus 17? 42. Um, you could steal item 2 and 3. And that would give you under capacity 5, which is allowed. And that would give you 17 plus 18, which would give you, what is 17 plus 18? 35. Thank you. I'm trusting you guys on this. Uh, with, there is an item of weight one, though. So if you steal items two and three, you have a spot left over, and you can steal one more pound of stuff. So you could also choose to steal item one on the way out. So you could actually steal item one plus item two plus item three. Um, and that would be 12 plus 17 plus 18. And that should be 47. Double check me on that. 
That sounds right. 10, 30, 40, 47. Okay. Um, and it turns out that 47 is maximal in this case. Um, now, let's say you were naively trying to solve the problem. Of course, we're going to solve the problem with DP. We'll, we'll describe its optimal substructure. But suppose you're trying to solve this problem and you didn't know DP. The first thing you might try is subsets of items, trying all possible subsets. But how many subsets are there? Two to the four. In general, uh, for n items, uh, two to the n subsets. So for each subset, you would check if it's overweight, and then you would check if the value, you keep the current max of the value. Um, not a really good way. First of all, the empty set is always a subset, but why check it? So there's one case you would ignore. You also kind of want to ignore all cases that have weight greater than, uh, whose sum of weights is greater than your current capacity. So you're, and depending on what the weight and capacity relationship is, you might be checking way too many things. Um, and in general, 2 to the n is exponential time, so it's already not that good. Um, as we'll see later, we'll, the dynamic programming solution for this problem is the most efficient one we have. But it is technically an exponential time solution. In fact, through complicated complexity reasons we'll get into uh, next unit, we don't believe that there is a polynomial time solution to this problem. We have no way. Not only do we not know how to solve this problem in polynomial time, we simply don't believe a polynomial time solution exists. Uh, we'll have to get into that later, though. So again, not the best uh, solution, though, trying all subsets. Uh, a better way is to try to interpret what the optimal substructure of the problem is. Um, before we get into the 0, 1 knapsack way, let's compare this problem to uh, a similar problem and describe why that has a solution that this one does, doesn't. Consider greedy knapsack, uh, not greedy set, knapsack, spoiler, uh, fractional knapsack. Fractional knapsack is where you can take parts of items. Right? Suppose everything's liquid. Instead of gold ingots, you have liquid gold. Instead of silver ingots, you have liquid silver. Uh, fractional knapsack does have an efficient solution. What is an efficient solution to fractional knapsack? Yeah, the greedy solution. Simply take as much gold as you can until you run out of gold. Then take as much silver as you can until you run out of silver. And then take as much bronze as you can until you run out of bronze, and so on. Um, so fractional knapsack allows you to take part of an item, right? There is no scenario where you would take, you know, less than, uh, if, if gold is worth more than silver, there, there's no scenario where you would give up a little bit of gold for some silver, because gold is worth more than silver. So up to your capacity, you just take as much gold as you can until you run out of gold, and then you fill the rest with silver, and so on. Um, the point I, I want to illustrate of the comparison between these two problems is that knapsack, in this case, 0, 1 knapsack, has a property that greedy, excuse me, Fractional knapsack does not. A greedy solution will not work for fractional knapsack. Um, excuse me. A greedy solution will not work for knapsack because of the way that the item weights interact. Here's a, an important part of knapsack. Uh, choosing an item may prevent you Uh, from choosing other items. Right? So if you choose an item, it may stop you from choosing a different item. Right? So consider that you had weights 40, uh, 40, uh, 70, uh, and 15, and you had capacity uh, like 85. Right? Um, well, let's make it simpler. Let's suppose you had capacity 80, right? Um, choosing an item of weight 70, which is a maximal solution, you're like, OK, I'm going to go for the biggest pot in the house. I'm going to steal the biggest rock or whatever. Um, if you choose item 70, you only have 10 units of capacity left over. So then if you were to choose a second item, you can only choose from items who, which have capacity less than 10, right? So choosing item uh, wj means 
you have capacity left left over what? If you choose item WJ, what is the capacity that's left over? W minus WJ. Right? Now, W minus WJ is going to be a smaller problem. Right? So you can simply compute W minus WJ somewhere else in the table, and then you may call upon that solution later on. So choosing item WJ will be a function of the solution for the capacity of W minus WJ, right? Um, another thing to note with this example is, again, the greedy solution does not work for knapsack here. Uh, choosing item 70, if you choose the biggest one, you have 10 left over. You can't choose any other items. Choosing item 50, if you do smallest first, choosing item 15 allows you to choose only item 40, and that's going to be 55, which is also not maximal. The maximal, of course, is... 40 foot plus 40, right? Yeah. This is zero one knapsack here. The, this, when, when, I've, when I've drawn boxes around it like this, what, I, what I'm, I'm trying to communicate is that uh, choosing an item eliminates the choice of another item. So choosing 70 means you cannot choose this item of 40. If you choose this item of 40, you also can't choose this item of 70, and so on. Choosing 40 and 15 means you can't choose 70. Choosing in 40 and 40 means you can't use anything else, and so on, right? So the selection of items that you're currently looking at influences which items you can select in the future. And that's part of the optimal substructure of knapsack. By optimal substructure, we mean like a problem is always, in DP, is always phrased as a function of its subproblems. So what subproblems are it going to be a function of, right? Any questions on the, before we get into how the DP solution is going to work for knapsack, any questions on the problem statement? Yes. The fractional knapsack does not have the same property that knapsack has. And knapsack, in this case, 0, 1 knapsack, means you choose or don't choose an item. Selection of an item prevents you from choosing a different item. Right? In fractional knapsack, suppose you just had everything was liquid. Right? You had buckets of gold and silver instead of ingots of gold and silver. And you had then a capacity of W is whatever, right? What you're going to do is you're going to pour all the gold into your bucket until you run out of gold. And then you're going to pour, pour all the silver into your bucket until either you run out of silver or you run out of capacity. And there may be some silver left over, right? The subweights, right. So if you have a, the problem as worded, does not restrict this. And we'll when this will be a case in the DP, if you have an item of weight 1,000 and you only have knapsack capacity 10, you simply can't choose the item. Yeah. So, so you just say, don't choose the item. Uh, oh, I see. It's not, it's not required that the uh, sum, oh, excuse me, that should be less than or equals. It's not required that the, the, the optimal choice of items equals the capacity. It may be optimal to not fill your knapsack because of the way weights and items are scaled. It, an optimal solution may involve uh, a selection of items that doesn't maximize your knapsack capacity. There may be a selection of items that doesn't maximize it. And here's an example of that. Let's just pretend we change this weight to 81, right? Uh, the, the optimal solution now doesn't satisfy the knapsack uh, capacity, right? Any more questions on just the problem statement and understanding its structure before we get into the, the DP? Yeah? You have to what? No. They can. They have to be less than or equal to W, right? Oh, what I'm saying is the optimal solution is not filling the capacity of the knapsack. So 40 plus 40 is the max you can steal. And suppose the weights are the values here, right? 40 plus 40 is the max you can steal here. 
doesn't matter that you still have a spot left over. The optimal solution may not equal the capacity, but that's fine. It should be close to the capacity, hopefully, right? You shouldn't have any more room to fit an item in uh, that you could have stolen that you didn't, certainly. All right, more questions on just the knapsack definition? It's an important definition, so I want to make sure we understand what the problem statement is. Yes? Yes. Uh, you take per, that's fine. You take, you take the one, oh, excuse me, yes, that's great. Uh, you take the, you don't take the value, which is maximal. You take the density, which is maximal. The, the, the per, per pound, which one's heavier? Not which one is in literally heavier, yes. Thank you, thank you. Um, right. Okay, let's get into the DP uh, solution. So first, you always need to make a decision about your table. Um, DP of, uh, first we need to address, do we need a one-dimensional table or a two-dimensional table? Actually, today, later today, we'll do a one-dimensional solution to knapsack. But for easiness, we're going to say that um, the table is two-dimensional, right? So the table is going to be indexed by what? We have two things we can choose, items and capacity. Those are the two free variables, and we want to move sort of in both directions for those. So we'll say dp um, uh, uh, is uh, w by n table of all zeros at the beginning. Um, and we want, again, to assign meaning to each element of the table. So then when you call the cell of the table, it's not simply a, a number, but it's a number that means that corresponds to some subproblem. So usually in DP, and this is not something I think you can get from and develop on yourself, but it's rather something maybe you can copy and memorize, is like when you are looking at a DP solution to something, you're considering problems in terms of subproblems. A good way to do that is consider what is the next thing I'm doing. So when you're considering what's the next thing I'm doing, it's, in this case, it's going to be consideration of the next item. So you're going to take, you, you've somehow solved some problem only looking at a, some previous items, and you're in consideration of the next item. Then that somehow may be that changes the solution or doesn't change the solution, right? So you look at the items. You don't look at the items one at a time, but you look at the, the set of items from 1 to n, 1 at a time. So we want dp of i j to, e to correspond to uh, only looking at items, uh, uh, we'll say v1, w1, uh, vj, uh, wj. So you're only looking at the first j items. Right? There's other ways you can index this, but I want to convince you that this is the best way in terms of just one of the axi. We'll talk about the i in a second. Let's just talk about j. You could think about, well, I have one element of the table for every possible subset of items I'm considering, and then maybe the optimal solution is there. But when you consider it this way, you can see that dp of ij is going to be a function of dp of something j minus 1, because the j minus 1 is considering of, the, of items 1 through j minus 1, and j is considering of items 1 through j. So somehow, you, you allow a, this local property to occur where you can, consider it, you can consider the next item. So the j will be the function of a j minus 1. Yeah. n is the number of items. So the number of items goes v1, uh, w1 to vj, uh, excuse me, vn, wn. And j will be for the items, and i will be for the capacity. Uh, well, what is i? i is going to be 1, 2, 3, all the way to w. So we can solve a capacity in terms of smaller capacities. That's the way the optimal solution will work. We'll say uh, max solution. Uh, for capacity i. 
then I will go from 1 to n, right? So this is what we mean by the table. This is what, uh, again, when you, when, when, you, when you do dp, the implementation is trivial, usually. The only important part is always what is the recurrence. And once you get the recurrence, doing dp is, ex is extremely easy. So you need to get the recurrence. Before you can get the recurrence, you need to phrase it in terms of its smaller subproblems. Yeah. Yes. Exactly, exactly, yes. 0 through 78, 79, 80, yeah. Um, now, so to, to phrase a problem in terms of optimal subproblems, you need to first express what the cell has with meaning, right? Um, so in D, again, with DP, you're taking the max, you're taking the min, you're taking the sum, you're taking a function of some items, depending on what the problem is worded as. So if you see max, min, or number of ways, you know to immediately look at the max function, the min function, or a sum of items, right? Given this, what are we going to do? Which one are we going to do? Max. So the DP is going to be a max of something, right? So rather than DP of IJ, let's not consider an intermediary node first. Let's just consider the last element, right? So let's just consider DP of WN. And it turns out W and N are arbitrary, but we'll use W and N here instead of I and J, OK? Now, uh, what happens if uh, Wn is greater than W? Suppose the item is too heavy. Like it weighs 1,000 pounds, it's the big cartoonishly large safe, and you can't carry it in your tiny rucksack. What do you do? What is Dp of Wn? So Dp of Wn is supposed to be considering the capacity W and all the items, items 1 through n. So if you cannot consider item n, what is dp of wn? It won't be 0. 0 would be means you take nothing. What n minus 1? dp what? dp of what? w n minus 1. This is why it's important to assign, to assign meaning to the cells. This corresponds to I have the same rucksack capacity, but I just simply do not consider the nth item. Right? Not choosing the nth item will have the same solution as only considering items 1 through n minus 1. So that's, that's why it's important to, to assign meaning to the cells. Now, suppose that you can consider Wn. Wn is less than or equal to W. So we split it into these two cases. Now, it's going to be a max of something, right? It's going to be a max of something, as we, de as we declared. When you do dp, you have every possibility, and you simply take the max of them, right? So you take the max or the min or the sum of them, right? But you have to consider every single possibility in this case. Yeah. The max of the last term? In two-dimensional, which, which way is the last term? So, I mean, that's, that's, I think, closer than you think, uh, as you'll see the solution, right? Um, the two possibilities at item n, yeah? That's almost there. That's close. The two possibilities are going to be choosing or not choosing the item. Not choosing the item is what? OK. That's the value if you don't choose the item. Is it, yes? Oh, OK, yeah. So this is not choosing the item. What value of the table is choosing the item? DP of what? W? Well, if you choose the item, your knapsack capacity is increased by that much. 
right? So you need to consider the problem as if you didn't choose that item. Excuse me, if you chose that item, but the capacity is the remainder of your capacity of you choosing that item, when you choose item 70, you have capacity 11 left over. And it is W minus WJ. So if you choose the item, you consider the subproblem of you not having chosen that item, but your capacity is as if you chose that item. Why this is a W minus WN is probably the most important part of the knapsack recurrence. And you need to be able to convince yourself of this. Um, now, what is the number of items that we're going to be looking at? If you choose the nth item, every item can only be chosen or not chosen one time. So how many, what set of items will we be looking at if we do choose the nth item? Yeah, n minus 1. Now, we're looking not for uh, the subproblem, but we're trying to find the weight. The mac we're trying, excuse me. Uh, again, the DP is going to store the numerical solution itself, and then we'll, through a hand wavy way, we explain how you can get the actual solution as the selection of items. But there's, there's something missing here. Yeah? Yeah. When you steal, choosing item uh, n means you get value vn. So you simply must sum vn. Does this make sense? Yeah? Right, so let's say you choose item n. Then item n is fixed. What else can you steal? What else, everything else you can steal. So actually, although we consider the items in order, it doesn't actually matter in real sense what items you steal in what order. If you think about it, A plus B is B plus A, right? So let's suppose you do choose item N. Then the, you will gain at least, you will gain value VN. What is the, no, you will also gain the value you can choose, the, the value that you can steal from a subproblem. What is that subproblem? Well, your, your capacity, you have a remaining capacity left over. The capacity you have left is W minus WN. The items you have left to choose to steal from is N minus 1. So this represents the other items you could steal from. This represents the value gained by choosing item N. This represents the value gained by choosing the other items. Yes? What is WN again? WN is the, is the weight of the nth item. Ah, because w, w, WN, somewhere previous in the table, which will be recurrent on values also previous in the table. This is why it's important to define a subproblem semantically, assign meaning to something. W, DP of IJ means only looking at items, w, uh, uh, items 1 through J of a max solution for capacity I. So what is the meaning of DP of W minus uh, WN, uh, N minus 1. That means only looking uh, at items uh, 1 to N minus 1, uh, max capacity W minus WN, right? So you have capacity left over W minus WN. Let's say WN was, let's say W was 30 and WN was 4. You have leftover capacity of 26. So you consider the subproblem of I only can hold 26 pounds, and I want to choose to steal from 1 to n minus 1. Rather than doing this, it's hard coding this through the subproblems itself. That's simply a value you've already stored and computed at this cell of the table. So you simply call on it. That's kind of the way you can think recursively with DP, but it is bottom up. Right? This problem is something you've already stored and written down. So simply r read it. Right? Yes. Sorry, what? Vn. So the val So each element of the table is the max value you can earn, right? So let's say you do choose item n. What is the maximum value? The maximum value is the the value of the item Vn 
but also the max you can steal with your remaining capacity choosing from the other items. So this is choosing from the other items, and this is choosing item n. So this term is considerate of you choosing the item. This term is considerate of not choosing the item. So you take the max of is it more efficient? Do I make more money by choosing or not choosing the item? It may be the case it's more, you make more money by not choosing the item because later on maybe you have enough capacity left over to do something, right? So every DP solution is, uh, uh, this follows the format of every DP solution, right? Let's rewrite this recurrence not in terms of the last item, but in terms of any intermediary item. So all we're simply going to do then is replace W with I and uh, J, uh, N with J. It's particularly important to have this uh, into two cases, because as you fill in the table, there will be a row of considering capacity only two, and then you won't be able to consider the items of weight uh, seven. Yes? Oh, thank you. Yeah. Right. So this is the DP, this is the DP recurrence for knapsack. This is it. This is something I think that's easy to memorize, and perhaps you should be able to do it. You think, oh, I have uh, I minus WI capacity, and I'm only looking at items uh, 1 through J minus 1 to compute DP of IJ. That's usually the way it goes. All right, let's implement it. There are other decisions that we need to make in a DP solution that we have not discussed. Uh, for example, what are the base cases? VJ, thank you. That's very, very important. It's the jth item. So um, we're going to allocate uh, uh, we'll even call it zero indexed. So we're going to allocate the W by N uh, table all zeros. So it's actually going to be a W by plus one, N plus one. What are the base cases of the problem? Uh, so in terms of n, it is the empty set. You're right. So in terms of the items, you choose, if, you're, if, if dp of ij is considering capacity i of items 1 through j, dp of i0 better be considering no items. So let's say you have capacity i, but no items to choose from. What is the maximal you can steal, value-wise? Yeah, so you'll, you'll say like uh, four 
i uh, we'll say like 4j in uh, 1 to say uh, no yeah it was i 4 uh, i in uh, uh, 0 to n no w uh, dp of i 0 is equal to 0 and for uh, j in now let's say you have a selection of items to choose from, but you have no capacity. You have all these beautiful things to steal, but you can hold nothing. It's going to be zero as well. And zero to n, dp of uh, zero comma j is equal to zero. Now, in practice, if you allocate the table, it's going to be filled with zeros. You don't have to state the base case. We want to just state the base case for clarity. Right? Um, it's important that your base cases are correct in the intuitive sense. Like you decide what does it mean for there to be zero items. And that means I'm choosing the empty set of items, right? And you need that to be the case simply so uh, the base cases are really important because they're called upon recursively. And you need to ensure the math is right. It's like induction. If you have the inductive step but not the base case, the whole thing can be wrong. You know, so you need to have the base case as well to ensure all the math propagates correctly forward because everything is just built recursively up, right? Um, so we'll just loop over the table for j in uh, 1 to n, uh, for i in uh, 1 to w. Uh, if uh, wj is less than equal to the current capacity i, uh, then we say t, it will say dp of i comma j just takes on a recurrence. There's another typo here. It's not i minus wi, it should be i minus wj. It's the jth item we're considering. The capacity is i. i minus wj of the j minus 1 items plus vj. Uh, else, dp of i comma j takes on dp of i minus i comma j minus 1, right? Um, and what do we return? What? Yeah, and what's that cell indexed at? It's w comma n, right? Well, I'm starting with 0. So the size is w1 plus 1, n plus 1, but we're going 0 to n and 0 to w. So it's going to be wn, right? And again, this question, what do you return, should have been answered by what is the semantic meaning of the cell dp of ij? It's for the capacity w and for the items, item 1 to item n. Yes? Yeah, thank you. WJ is the jth item. We're considering the jth item. And, w, and I is supposed to be the current capacity. OK, so this is a simple implementation of knapsack. Um, here's something that's not so simple. And what's the runtime of knapsack of this implementation? One second, hold on. Yes, as you said, it's O of Wn. The table is of size Wn, and you're simply taking a max. And let's suppose it's fixed point arithmetic. Uh, it makes everything easier. You don't have to consider the number of bits of a number, uh, but what you might actually, right? Um, is this an exponential or polynomial time solution? It's an exponential time solution. This is a great true and false question on an exam. This is an exponential time algorithm. Why? So everyone thinks, and, and everyone gets stuck on this. Oh, look, those are two letters, and I'm multiplying together. That sounds like a polynomial. But you measure an algorithm in the runtime 
of the input, the size of the input. So when you say, you know, oh, input size is k, but then time is 2 to the k, everyone's like, yeah, that's an exponential time algorithm. But if the input size, if the time is w, and it's technically wn here, but if the size is w, and the input size, what is the size of w? The size of w is not 1. The size of w is a number. What is the size of a number? The number of bits, and what's the number of bits of a number? No, opposite, other way. It's log of w. It takes log w bits to express w. Yes? So is that algorithm that you wrote essentially just like the self that you write in your value? It's a value. It's only the number. The value, it's the, it's the, the max solution. So it's the number itself. Um, if you see k and you see and you go to two to the k, you're like, yeah, that's exponential time. But for some reason, people get hung about this. About you know, if I go from log w to w, that's the same change. But then you see the w and the time, and everyone thinks, oh, that can't be exponential. That's not exponential time. It is exponential simply because the input is that much smaller. We're not even considering how much uh, of the in and items are necessary or whatever. But the fact that you could express w in log w bits means a runtime in terms of w and not log w makes this an exponential time algorithm. Do you guys believe me? The difference between k and 2 to the k is as big as the difference between w and log w. It's simply a change of coordinate system. How do you go from log w to w? You exponentiate it. How do you go from k to 2 to the k? You exponentiate it. Right? The difference between those is it's big. So suppose instead of d wn, I wrote, you know, the size of w is equal to k. So this is actually o of 2 to the k uh, n, right? If I wrote it that way, you would be like, oh, that's 2 to the something. That looks exponential, you know? You have to measure the algorithm not, not necessarily in terms of the numbers, but in terms of the size of the input. So whether something is polynomial or exponential depends upon the input, uh, the input size. And because log w is so much smaller, the time is exponential. So this is a better than brute force solution, but it's still exponential time. Right? That's the, the, one of the, the gotchas of this algorithm. And again, for reasons we don't know yet, we do not believe there to be a polynomial time solution. There may be faster exponential time solutions, but we don't believe that there is a polynomial one. There isn't one significantly faster that's uh, as a function of log w. Right? Any questions on the runtime argument? Yeah? Because the input is given in a way that's not, that you cannot represent it as log w usually. You're given longest sequences, it's, it's nm. But the input is not log n log m. The input is nm as well. Because you're given a string of that length. If you have a string of length n, the size of it is n. It's not log n. This is a property of numbers that's not true for lists. Um, the, the size of the items is going to be some constant times n because you have n items. You can't express the n items in log n. You can express each number in log of vi or whatever, but there's still n items. There's still two n numbers to store. So if each one's at least a bit, then the size of the items is at least 2n. Right? So storing the items is linear in n, but storing w is logarithmic in w. Yes? Uh, this is an intrinsic mathematical property not really to do with logs. I mean, so like back in the day, Neolithic times, before we figured out that you could count in base anything else, we used to only count in base 1, right? What is 4 in base 1? That's that. What is 5 in base 1 and 6 in base 1, 7 in base 1? Everything was a pile of sticks. So the size of the input in Neolithic times, you would hunt mammoth, you would count everything in piles of sticks. And the greatest invention was realizing, well, you know, okay, instead of doing four like this, I could do, put a finger down for a different digit, you know? Uh, and that, that does incur a logarithmic speed up. Nothing really to do with the computer, right? It's an intrinsic mathematical property that a number n in any base can be stored in log n bits.
or digits or anything else. Yes? Well, that's the size of the input is log w. But the time has w in it. How many bits does it take to write down w? Yes, but you're given it as a parameter. The input is w and then n items. Um, w could be 1,000, and then you can only have three items. W is the capacity. N is the number of items. You could have 1,000 items in capacity three. They're not necessarily related. Let's do a quick example of filling in a table. So suppose, like previously, we have items uh, only one, two, three, and four, but we have capacity uh, up to six. And the weights of the items are, again, um, uh, one, two, three, four. This is weights. This is value. The values are going to be 12, uh, 17. 18 and 25, right? So base case, you consider no items, but your capacity increases. That's going to be zeros here, and it's going to be zeros here, right? If your capacity increases, but you have no items to choose from, or if your capacity, if your items, set of items increases, but you have no capacity to carry items, those are all going to be zeros. Um, Let's go column by column. So we'll increase the capacity, but fix the set of items. So each column, this column one, is considering do you steal or don't steal item one. So you can only steal item one if you have the capacity for it. And congrats, item one has weight one in this case. It's not always true that the weights will equal the capacities. The weights will equal the index of the items. Here it is. So you can always, if you have capacity one or more, you can always choose to steal item one, right? So you will always gain a value of item one, which is 12. Now suppose you have weight of 2. Uh, excuse me. Here, you can choose between items 1 and 2, but you only have capacity 1. So your choice is, unfortunately, you can only choose to steal item 1. So this is going to be a 12. Here, you have capacity 2 and selections of items of weights 1 and 2. So you have two choices. Steal item 2, steal item 1, or steal neither. That's three choices, actually. But what are you going to do? Are you going to steal item 1 or steal item 2? You're going to take the max of items 1 and items 2. This is corresponding to what? If you think about the way we have the recurrence set up, this is corresponding to uh, choosing a dp of i minus, uh, i j minus 1 uh, versus dp of i minus wj, j minus 1, plus vj. So for this specific case, you're taking the max of 12 and 0 plus 17. Because dp of, WJ, uh, of i minus wj, j minus 1 is going to be 0. It's going to be uh, 2 minus 2 is going to be 0 column, and j minus 1. It's going to be this one. And uh, i j minus 1 is this one. So you take the max of this plus 17 or this. So you're going to choose 17. Do we see how this element is dependent upon the two that's highlighted? Unlike longest sequences where you can quick, you can kind of see a, a path through the graph, it's not as obvious what that path is here because of this plus vj term. It makes it kind of complicated. Um, and also the fact that i minus wj is in the previous column, because it's j minus 1, but it's somewhere up the column that you can't really easily know, obviously. Um, but it is at index i minus wj. All right? Now let's suppose you have capacity 3 and items 1 and 2. 
Uh, spoiler, I'll just tell you, you can choose to steal both items. So you'll just do that. And that's going to be 17 plus 12, which is 29, right? Um, now, if you can only choose items 1 and 2, but your capacity increases, you've already actually taken the max solution here. So this sort of talking that I'm doing is not the way the algorithm works, but it's sort of helping us fill in the table to understand the structure of the problem. Yeah? Why didn't I do what? Uh, because I only have capacity two. So I have items of weight one and weight two. If I choose to steal item two, I have no weight left. I can't even carry one out the door. My knapsack is full. If I choose to steal item one, I have one unit left in my capacity, but I can't carry an item of weight two. Right? So you know, given capacity two in the first two items of weight one and two, you cannot choose both. But congrats, if you increase your capacity to three, you can choose both. Because one plus two is three. Yeah. Yeah. No, not necessarily. I promise it'll still work, uh, but what the structure of the table would look like would be a little different. But it would still, this recurrence still works. OK? So if you have capacity one, turns out you can only steal uh, item of weight one. If you have capacity two, you can still choose. Uh, you cannot choose item three. And you can only choose between items one and two. So it's going to be the same solution. If you have capacity three, you can now choose between both one and two or three. So you would either choose or not choose item three. And if you chose item three, uh, it would be uh, dp of 0, comma 2, uh, which would be this one. So it would be 0 plus 18 uh, versus uh, choosing items the previous, which would be uh, not choosing it, which would be uh, 3, comma 2, right? Which would be 29. So it'll be 29. Do we see what happened there? I didn't know. Now, if you were doing this for a small problem, you would compare 1 plus 2 versus 3, because those are the same. But instead of comparing in the more general sense, you don't compare 1 plus 2 and 3. You compare 3 with uh, i, j minus 1. And i, j minus 1 will actually end up being the 1 plus 2. The subproblem of 1 plus 2 is stored at i, j minus 1. So you compare i j minus 1 with i minus w j, j minus 1 plus v j, right? Um, now what happens if you have capacity 4, but you have items to choose 1, 2, and 3? Uh, I'm going to speed this up a little bit and just say that the optimal solution in this case is not actually choose. You can't choose items 2 and 3. You could choose items 1 and 2, but you can also choose items 1 and 3. And it turns out that 1 plus 3 is greater than 1 plus 2 by 1. So this is going to be 30. Speeding that up a little bit, but perhaps you can see that. That is 29, but that is 30, right? So you would choose 1 plus 3. Um, now, what if you have capacity 5? You could actually choose items 2 plus 3 here, and that'll be 17 plus 18 is what? 35, yes. Um, if you have capacity 6, you can choose to steal items 1, 2, and 3, which is 49, 47, right? Uh, final row, if you have capacity 1 and all items to choose from, well, you can only carry 1 pound, so you can only take the first item. If you have capacity 2, you can choose only item 1 or item 2, but not both. So it'll take item 2, which is 17. If you have, if you have capacity 3 and all items to choose for, you still can't choose item 4. So it's going to be the max you could steal um, not considering that item. So this value should be 29. If you have capacity 4, you can choose to steal item 4 or uh, ij minus 1. But it will be not considering value. But 30 is greater than 25. So you could choose to steal item 4, or you could choose to steal the subproblem of not stealing item 4. So 30 is greater than 25, so we put 30 here. And then, f and then you have uh, weight 5, capacity 5, and all four items to choose from. Um, you can choose to steal uh, a couple combinations of items. Let's work this one out. Um, 
So we say dp of 5 comma 4 is going to be um, 5 is greater than, excuse me, the weight 4 is less than 5, the capacity. So you can choose it. So it's going to be dp of uh, 5, 3, so not considering the item. Or uh, you do consider the item, so it's going to be as much as you can carry away with one pound left in your rucksack, the, th the three items that come previously, and you keep the weight 25, right? So 5 comma 3 is going to be 35. And DP of 1 comma 3, unfortunately, means you can only carry one pound and you consider the three items. So that's 12. Is that 12? So that's 12 plus 25. Hopefully you guys are making sure I'm, I'm not making any mistakes. What is 12 plus 25? 37. OK. Finally, you have six capacity six and four items to choose from. Now, you could not choose the item, and that would give you a value of 47. Or if you choose the item, uh, what would that give you? That would be a max of, uh, so we say dp of 6 comma 4, which is the final answer, is going to be a maximum of not choosing the item, which is going to be dp of 6 comma 3, uh, which is 47. Or dp of, if you choose the item, it's going to be 2 comma 3 plus 25. And dp of 2 comma 3 is 2, 3 is 17, so it's 17 plus 25 versus 47. Uh, without even adding that, I know 47 is bigger. Yeah. I have DP of 2 comma 3 to be 17. The max you can steal with only capacity 2 but choosing from the first three items means you can choose, if you only have capacity 2, you can only choose items 2, it turns out. Right. Okay. So you've seen an execution of uh, the 0 1 knapsack recurrence? Yes? No, uh, it will, because this is capacity Wn. But notice that the solution, actually, if you remember the solution we did at the beginning, it was actually choosing items 1, 2, and 3, and not choosing, not choosing item 4. So that corresponds to going here. So dp of 6, 4 is equal to dp of 6, 3. The solution of, because we don't consider item 4, it's as if we never had in the problem anyway. So that's it, it, only for this specific instance is that true. Yes? Ah, so what are our base cases? The base cases are you choose no, you have no items to choose from. And if you have no items to choose from, the max you can steal is nothing, independent of how big your rucksack is. The other base case, suppose you have many items to choose from, but you have no capacity. You can't carry a single pound out. Ah, yes. Let's suppose the weights are positive. In the real world, nothing is free, right? Um, uh, all right. Let's talk about a variant of knapsack. Questions? Yeah? DP of 2, comma 3 corresponds to you can hold 2 pounds and you can choose between the first 3 items. So without getting into the actual recurrence, let's just solve this on a local level. You, have, you can only hold weight 2 and you have 3 items to choose from of weights 1, 2, and 3. The max you can steal is 1 item. So you just take the max of 1, 2, and 3, which is going to be 12, 17, and 18. So it's just going to be 17. No, you can't consider item 3 because it is weight 3. So the max you can steal is either item 1 or item 2, but not both. And you can also choose to steal neither. Well, I don't know why you would do that. But the max of that is just simply going to be the weight of item 2 itself, which is going to be 17. All right, more questions on the 01 knapsack? Let's quickly talk about a variant of knapsack called uh, knapsack with repetition. There's infinitely many copies. So it's not simply that you choose or don't choose an item. It is the case that you choose if you choose an item, you can choose the item again and again and again and again. Now, this is kind of close to a greedy solution, but not really as we'll see. 
Because if there's an item whose density is maximal, you could just choose that one repeatedly. But let's suppose you're, the weights of the items were even and then your capacity was odd. You'll have one left over or something. So maybe not choosing an item may allow for an item of value 3. So although this may seem closer to the greedy solution, this is actually not. It's actually still closer to the 0, 1 knapsack solution. right? And our recurrence, I claim, will be very similar. Uh, dp of uh, w to n is max weight, max capacity, w uh, items of v1, w1, of vn, uh, wn, right? Um, dp of i comma j is going to be what? Suppose an item, even with infinitely many copies, is too heavy to hold. Suppose uh, wj is still greater than your capacity. What is dp of ij, infinitely many copy solutions? You don't consider any copies of item j, yeah? Correct. You consider no copies of item j. Sorry, you'll have to speak up a little bit. The other way is you consider, let, let's go through it a little slower. You consider, you, first off, it's a max problem again. It's similar to knapsack. So you're going to take a max of something. And that's going to be the case you can consider item J. And if you can consider item J, you have two cases. You choose a copy of item J, or you don't choose a copy of item J. And again, but choosing a copy of item J doesn't mean you eliminate choosing more copies of it, right? So this is going to be max of two things, which is going to be not choosing any copies which is dp of i j minus 1, as we said previously. But then what is this part? Close? W j, j plus v j. What's the difference between this recurrence and the previous one, that's a j here and not a j minus 1, right? That's the only difference between infinitely many copies of an item and no copies of an item. The j minus 1 here in the previous recurrence, which is now hidden, there, the j minus 1 in the previous recurrence symbolized uh, if you choose item n, then you only have to consider the set of items from 1 to n minus 1, because you've already chosen or not chosen the item, so just consider the other items. But here, if you choose an item, that doesn't mean you can never choose it again in the future because there's infinitely many copies of items. So what is the set of items you have left to choose from? It's 1 to j. Choosing an item does not eliminate its choice in the future here. So you can choose it again. So here, the j minus 1 meant you looked at the column to the left of you. Here, this j means you'll actually look at the column above you. right? Many copies of some item j means you look at the, look at the uh, item above you. right? So uh, this is uh, uh, the recurrence for knapsack with repetition. Any questions on this? Do we understand the, 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 how the, such a small change changes the problem immensely? Just a, a j minus 1 and a j changes exactly what problem you're solving? All right. Um, so this was knapsack. Knapsack, a very important problem, as we'll see after. Uh, this unit. It, every problem is like a knapsack problem in some sense. It's a huge, a huge breadth of problems. Um, right, that's all I have for you today.